Hello students and welcome to unit 5 where we're going to learn about applications to derivatives part 2. In our previous unit we spent a lot of time looking up how we can use the derivative to find relative maximum and minimum values but we never touched on absolute maximum and minimum values. That's what we're going to be doing here in this video looking at how we can find absolute max and min. So let's get started. <laughs> So I want you to dig back to your pre-calculus days. Really think back to what was an absolute extrema, what was a relative extrema. So a relative extrema is any point on the graph where it's changing from increasing to decreasing. So we know that the first derivative is going from positive to negative, something like that. Or it could go from decreasing to increasing, we would have a relative minimum. So it's any point on the graph where it's doing that. Now absolute extrema, are the absolute, are the global, are the maximums and minimums. So you have the highest high point and you have the lowest low point. So we're not worried about all the relatives where it's switching from uh, increasing to decreasing. We're just worried about the highest point on the graph and we're worried about the lowest point on the graph. Now let's spend some time to actually look at how this can come up here. So we're gonna identify the coordinates of the relative extrema of f, which is on that left side there. And so we've got some relative extrema. We've got relative min, a relative max, and a relative minimum again. So go ahead and write those down. All right, and so then on the domain, we're looking at that entire domain from negative infinity to positive infinity. So what are the coordinates of the absolute extrema of f? And so as I'm looking at this, I notice here that there is no point lower than two negative six. So that's gonna be an absolute minimum. Now an absolute maximum just does not exist here because it goes up to infinity. And so we can't actually say that the absolute maximum is infinite because that is not a real number. So we'll say here that the absolute min is happening at two comma negative six. So now let's go over here to this equation on the right. Let's look at this graph. And what you can notice here is that this graph for g of x is actually has a more defined domain from negative five to positive six. So let's identify the coordinates of the relative extrema. So we have a local or a relative minimum here, a relative maximum and a relative minimum. So we'll write that down. All right, and now what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna identify the absolute max and min. So we have an absolute min right here at negative three, negative four. We also have a absolute maximum over here at this endpoint. So we also have to take that into account when that domain gets more condensed there. So let's go ahead and write down that absolute maximum and minimum. And so we wanna make some conclusions here. So what conclusions can we make about if we're on the domain of the given function, what can we say about where those absolute extrema are occurring as opposed to those relative extrema? So what we wanna say here is that absolute extrema can occur where those relative extrema are. But that's not necessarily always going to be the case as shown here in this graph of g of x. That is not always going to be the case because as you can see in this graph, the endpoint can also be absolute extrema. Now let's look at a couple more graphs where we're actually gonna start cutting off that domain here. So starting here with the graph of f of x, we're gonna be looking on the interval from negative two to three. So let me just kind of mark that off. That's gonna be negative two to three, and what are the absolute extrema? So I have an absolute maximum at negative one, three, and an absolute minimum on the interval at two, negative six. So go ahead and let's write that down. So now I also wanna take another look at this, but changing the interval from negative four to one. So let me mark that real quick. So that looks like negative four right there over here to positive one. So I'm just kind of marking it up. And so now we wanna say, okay, what's the absolute maximum and minimum. So based off of those endpoints, really I'm only looking in that condensed interval from negative four to one, and I have an absolute maximum at negative four comma four. So notice here that that is higher than the point than that relative uh, maximum negative one three. Then I also have an absolute minimum at one negative three at that endpoint. So the endpoints turn out to be absolute maximums and minimums. So now we're gonna transfer over here to the graph of g of x. So let's start looking at that and we're gonna be looking at different intervals again. So our first interval we're gonna be looking at is in between negative four right there to positive five. And we wanna say, okay, what are the maximums? What are the absolute maximums? And what are the absolute minimums? So I have an absolute minimum. There's no point lower than this at negative three, negative four. 
And then I also have a shared maximum at negative one, four, and at five, four. So you can write both of those down because they share that maximum value. So go ahead and write those out. All right, and now we're gonna change up that interval here. So we're gonna be looking here from negative two to positive six. So let me mark that off. So negative two to positive six. And on that interval, you wanna say, okay, what are the highest and what are the lowest points? So I have the lowest point here at negative two, zero. And the highest point at that end point, six comma five. So we have an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. And let's go ahead and write those down. All right, so now we just want to get out of what, what are we getting from this? What are we gathering? So when the domain gets restricted to a particular interval, there are three places that you might be noticing where absolute extrema could exist. So those three places are gonna be at the endpoints where f prime is equal to zero. So let's look at over here where f prime is equal to zero. So that's where we have these maximums, these local maximums and minimums happening. That's where f prime of x, you can see is going to be equal to zero there. And then the third point where you can have an absolute extrema is where f prime of x is undefined. And if we look over here at the graph of g of x, at all of these points here, you can see that since these are sharp corners, the graph is actually, or the derivative there is actually undefined because the derivatives don't match on either side. So that's also points where we're gonna have to take into account where absolute extrema could exist. So again, that's where we have endpoints where f prime of x equals zero and where f prime of x is undefined. And that's going to lead us into the extreme value theorem. And so you've already learned about the intermediate value theorem where if you have like a high point and a low point and the function's continuous, you're always going to cross all the values in between there. What the extreme value theorem states is that if f of x is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, then f of x has at least one absolute max and at least one absolute minimum on the interval. So at least one absolute max and at least one absolute minimum. And what you always wanna take into account is that those can occur at any of those three places that we said. So we can solve for f prime and find where we have points that are undefined, where points are equal to zero. And then we also can check it against the endpoints. And so since we have the extreme value theorem situated here, what we're going to be doing in our next video is actually applying it so that we can actually find where those absolute maximums and where those absolute minimums are actually occurring given a graph or given a function using calculus. Of course, if any of this doesn't make sense, please reach out to me so I can clarify anything and give you more practice problems on the extreme value theorem. You guys know I'm always here to help. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this is Mr. Hernandez. Peter.